Hey, welcome back to part three of High Level Tips and Tricks for your Chia List programs. I'm Adam Kelly. This part, we're going to get into announcements. And it's a bit of a complex subject because this is how coins communicate with each other in the Chia blockchain. Now, they can only do that communication from within the same block. Coins appear in blocks when they are spent. The output of their program when run creates those conditions, some of which can be announcements. And those announcements can affect other coins and whether they are spent or not. So first, let's just break this down into announcements and asserts. An announcement is a piece of data that you can think of it as being put into a pool that's accessible by all of the spends in a block. Uh, it's kind of like a broadcast to everything that's happening in that block. A wallet can remember spends that have happened in the past, but for the CLVM code that's being run in your coin in that block, it can only see announcements that are happening right then. That means to propagate certain historical information, if we're using announcements, we kind of have to reach into our coin, pull that information out, and put it into an announcement if we want another coin that's being spent in that same block to see it. So let's take a quick look at what announcements we have. We've got these two create announcements. And then we've got two assertions that are related to them. These conditions create coin announcement and create puzzle announcement are those broadcasts that we're talking about. And the information that's being conveyed is in the puzzle announcement case, it's a coin with this exact puzzle has announced this message, whatever it is. And in the coin announcement case, it's a coin with this exact coin ID, not just any coin with that puzzle, but only this one coin that could have existed only once on this blockchain in this combination of triples. That exact coin is announcing this information. So the announce side is kind of like the broadcast side of the equation. The corresponding asserts are ways for you to tell other coins, hey, if you don't see this announcement, don't spend. So the asserts are kind of like the policemen or the stop signs. You can announce as much as you want. You can announce every time. The only thing that's stopping you is the extra cost of those bytes in your program. So if you wanted to write a wallet that announced your name every time you did a spend, just so you could grep through the blockchain, that's perfectly fine. Announce as much as you want. The asserts are where we get our security and the ability to change our behavior. The example we're going to use is an oracle. So an oracle is a way of bringing real-world information onto the blockchain in a way that we can interface with programmatically. To be a good oracle, you need to be able to do two things. You need to bring that information into a format that can be reliably consumed by other transactions, and you need to be able to prove your identity to the other agents on the network. It's not enough to just say that you are some famous Wall Street financial service. We demand cryptographic proof that the same entity controlling the Oracle in the past is the same one producing these announcements now in this block. And we can do that fairly easily by chaining transactions together. So this slide represents a state change in the Oracle. If an oracle always published the same information, it wouldn't be very useful. So to create a usable one, we're going to have to change the information that's coming out of the oracle. And in Chia Lisp, that means creating an entirely new puzzle. Because puzzles are attached one-to-one -one with coins, you need to spend a coin to make a new puzzle to change the information that's contained in that puzzle in any way. Let's take a look at our example. This short program is the entirety of our Oracle. 
And it's really just the last four lines. We'll go over what the other functions do. Let's concentrate on the last four lines first. What these expressions do is build a list of lists. And the contents of that outside list are the conditions that are emitted by your coin when it is spent. So this would only happen when you are changing the oracle, when you're broadcasting new information. This oracle is very simple. It only has one parameter called number, but of course this could be arbitrary information. Take a look at the last two lines. We see assert my amount and create puzzle announcement. And I have those captured here. I'm also claiming that there's another condition, create coin. Let's trace the code and see where that's computed. So right here, there's a function called recreate coin. The definition is here. And while this is run, part of what's output is a new list with the condition create coin. So that's where create coin comes from in this diagram. That condition is there to control the puzzle hash and amount of the new coin. What that's saying is if a new coin attempts to be created, I want to see that it has this puzzle hash and the mod. Let's look at the parameters. So you see mod hash. Mod is uh, frequently used in our code base to denote module. That's just this whole function in this case. Number is the data that we are transmitting with our Oracle. And my amount is not directly relevant to what we're doing, but because a coin in Chia Lisp has to have puzzle. In this case, the hash of that puzzle is mod hash. The parent is going to be us and an amount. We need to have an amount if we are going to destroy this coin and create a new coin. Down here, I put that the new oracle has an assert my amount. That is sort of pre-programmed in as a check to see that the amount of this coin has not changed. Because in the first coin, when we ran create coin, we locked down the puzzle hash and amount. So in the new coin, we want to continue to have the same amount so that it's not possible for another entity, if they knew the puzzle, to come in and create a coin that's very similar but maybe has a different amount. This way, we know that there's exactly one Let's look at the code a little bit. So the most important thing, for example, that this oracle does is create puzzle announcement. Now we recall that that announcement assures another coin that a coin with this puzzle has announced this data. If we follow the chain of control backwards, so this is the main entry point of the coin, we ignore these two definitions. We keep going up. Here's where the data flows in through these arguments. The controller of that number, the entity that is allowed to change that number by spending this Oracle coin is the person who created this Oracle in the first place. Because of the way that the program is arranged on the bottom here, every time it's run, that is every time it's changed every time we update number, we are going to announce. Let's take a look at what it looks like to run this. Okay, so right now the high level Chia Lisp compiler is running and it's converting that higher level code to lower level CLVM code. It's also doing a little bit of constant propagation. You know, if it sees two trees of instructions that are exactly the same. It'll consolidate those. And here's what we have. This is essentially the assembly language layer of the CLVM system. We're not going to go into that right now, but I just wanted you to get a feel for what it looks like to run this. So I'm going to stick that into a file. Okay, and now we're going to run that. Let's take a look at what arguments it takes. So we see mod hash, then number, and then my amount. Okay, so we know my amount is just an amount of mojos that will probably stay the same throughout this Oracle's lifetime. It just needs to exist for the coin to exist and therefore for the program to exist on the blockchain. So a convention we use a lot is just to set the amount of the smart contract to one. So we'll use that. Number is the number that we're announcing. 
and mod hash is a hash that is calculated. We show how to do this in other tutorials. Right now I'm just going to use a placeholder. Okay, so we're going to run that low-level assembly with the arguments. Now notice how fast that ran. There is a big difference in optimization between the low-level CLVM and the complicated transformations that the, the GLS compiler is trying to do. If you are developing a smart coin and you're just running it with different arguments, you're not recompiling, you may just want to use run on the assembled output. Let's look at this output. This is our conditions list. So down here, I organize these into three lists. We've got create coin, create puzzle announcement, and assert my amount. And you see here, we've also got three lists. That's the create coin. That's the puzzle announcement. And that's our amount. So every iteration of this Oracle coin is going to have assert my amount one. One trick that you can do if you are debugging some complicated conditions is this. Because atoms in CLVM are used to represent both strings and numbers, you can freely swap them out if those values are not used for computation. So when these conditions are output, that's it. Our program is done running. We're not doing any more computation on these. We don't know where this data goes next as a CLVM program. Where they go is they get handed to the validation checker and they get checked along with every other spend. But because we're not computing with this value, it's just a placeholder, a trick you can do is don't include the condition codes. What that's going to do is it won't then substitute the value for this constant. Let's see what that does. I've written a script here that compiles and then runs a program with the given arguments. Uh, so let's just use that. This saves one step. Let's use the same arguments as before. Okay, now it's recompiling, so this part is going to be a bit slow. Okay, look, this is just a quick hack so that you can see that the output of the conditions are the same ones that you expect. So like if you interposed two of these, if you do this trick, it'll be very obvious which one you've messed up. Again, with conditions, what you expect to see is a list of lists. For very simple contracts, you'll just see maybe one or two checks. But the one that we're interested in here is create puzzle announcement. Earlier, I claimed that the puzzle and the data are tied together, but here we just see create puzzle announcement and then the data. Well, the place that those get tied together is in the validation checker. So the Chi of blockchain knows which coin produced each set of these conditions, and it pairs those up with your announcements, and then they're able to be checked in other coins. Speaking of other coins, let's look at the other side of our Oracle. So this is the Oracle. This is a very simple program that just allows you to announce. This is basically just a shell to enable this condition to come out in a cryptographically verifiable way. Let's look at the other side. This program's even shorter. But you'll see the key condition, assert puzzle announcement. And Indeed, the puzzle hash is referenced, but it's referenced here on the assert side, because on the other side, we know what the puzzle hash of the coin that outputs the announcement is. It's, it's redundant to say that. But over here is where we check and we see, okay, are you running the program that I expected you to run? Because if not, probably some shenanigans are going on. That will fail. And then, do you have the number I expected? So in this contrived example, all we're doing is we are checking for a specific number. 
but in a more sophisticated program, we might want to trigger on a range of conditions. So what this condition right here does, in a high-level way of saying it, is, is there another coin being spent in the same block as me with that puzzle, Oracle Puzz Hash, and that's matching that number? And if all of those are true, then this condition passes a validation checker. And this coin, which is a different coin, is able to be spent. So we call that the guesser. In this. We're just consuming the number from the oracle in this example. This here, this SHA-256 expression, is the mechanism that the puzzle hash of the oracle and the data from the oracle are bound together. But that's, that's kind of a detail that isn't particularly relevant. It's just relevant that those two are bound together in such a way that they can be separated. Now you notice there's another condition here. And earlier on in our last video, we were talking about AgSig, in this case, AgSig me. This is an extra condition on the spending of this coin. And you can think of this as another and. So this condition holds and this signature holds. This is a way for us to introduce control for a person who has a particular key. What this number guesser does is it says, if the oracle is an oracle I know, and if the oracle has said the exact number I've been waiting on, and the person signing this transaction has the secret key corresponding to this public key. That is, they can produce a signature for this message that matches up with this announcement. Then you can spend me. So this is a way to lock the value behind this coin, the guesser coin. That can only be released when two parties are cooperating in a very specific way. So if you have that oracle being run by a large secure corporation, say, with a lot of resources, and you have your wallet keys, but say something happens, maybe someone's trying to coerce you to spend this particular coin. It still won't be spent unless this puzzle announcement assertion passes as well. So you can lock in programmatically behavior from happening, except in certain circumstances that are controlled by other coins. All right, that's been an overview of how to use announcements and what they are in Chia Lisp. Remember that they are a little ephemeral in the sense that a coin spend can only access an announcement within the same block. But if you have any questions, please come to our Keybase Chia Lisp channel and uh, ask away. We've got some great people. Thank you very much.